Hello and welcome to this Click Team Fusion 2.5 tutorial. Today I'm going to be uh, developing a game called Jump Jump. Um, you can download the um, graphics library for this, um, which can end up in your library window here. Um, you can get that from the website in the link below. Um, but yeah, in this tutorial, um, we're going to create a simple jump game uh, in Click Team Fusion 2.5. I'm going to show you how easy and how fast it is to construct a game like this. Um, right, let's crack on then. So, uh, the first thing we need to do is load up the library. You can see in the library window it should appear under local library and jump jump. Um, we can jump in there and we've got all the objects that we're going to need. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do is change the size of your application to 480 by 640. It's kind of inverted on the uh, on the normal uh, normal size to what we do. So, um, here you can see we've got the play area set up. Um, so let's not waste any more time. Let's change the size of the frame. Uh, we want it to be um, a lot higher than what it is right now. So we'll change this to 1800. So we can see now we've got quite a bit of height to our frame. Uh, you can see this bounding box here. This tells us uh, how big the initial window size is and how big the frame is. And we're going to scroll up and down this frame window in Fusion 2.5. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change the uh, background color of the frame. Let's change it to that. Um, and let's drop in a few um, platforms to get going. So this will be our initial platform. And we can just drag and drop quite a few of these. If I hold down control on the keyboard, I can just keep dragging the same object across like so. Just like that. I can create as many platforms as I want. And there we go. You can use platform too as well in there if you want to. There's a couple of variations for you to use. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is select both of these objects um, and change the obstacle type to platform. Then Fusion knows that these backdrop objects are indeed platform objects. Uh, right, so uh, let's set up the interface. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop the score in the top right corner of the frame. Um, and we're going to drop the lives in the top left corner, like so. Uh, we can put a bit of grass down as well if we need to. This is not an obstacle type, so we can keep the obstacle as none. This is just purely for visual reasons. So we'll pop a bit of grass down on the platforms, don't have to do all of them, just do whatever which ones you want to do. Um, right, so our user is going to be collecting carrots, so we'll do the same, drop carrots onto the screen, onto the ledges, it's all about the carrots. If you missed how I did this, you can just hold the control key down on your keyboard while you click and drag an object and it will create a copy of the same object it will not clone it just create a duplicate that was a bit difficult to see let's put it up there a little bit more right there we go let's put our final one up here there's a bit of a clash between the lives and the platform there so let's do that right that's the carrots that's the scenery done um, we'll drop in a few cloud objects we can just order these to the back Like so, if they're overlapping any of the existing backdrop objects. And finally, let's drop on some enemies onto the play area. Don't want to make it too difficult at the start. There we go. Right. Um, what else do we need to do? That's pretty much it. And what we do need to do is we need to drop our player into the play area as well. Right. That's that's our um, level setup. That's our play area setup. We're ready to go. If we run that, already you'll see it starts at the top. Uh, we can't see our player. I'm just going to get rid of the heading and the menu bar. We can see what we're doing better. There we go. Right. So the first thing we need to do is create an event. Always. 
and we're going to do scrollings center position frame we're going to click on the player so it's always going to be where our player is there we go right so player let's give him a movement let's give him the basic platform movement and don't forget this tutorial is just for um beginners really to fusion 2.5 the platform uh, movement does everything you need to do in terms of platform games um the, as you advance uh, more and more into Fusion 2.5, you'll eventually realize that the platform movement object is much, much better um, for these type of games. But for now, um, for the beginners, the platform, the bullet platform movement, and for this example, is perfect. It, it's fine, fine to use. Right, so we've got our player in. Um, now, we need to, first of all, create an event uh, that says if our player collides with a backdrop, we need to stop the movement. So when we run our game, we can see already, look at that, that we can jump and we can move our player. Pretty cool. Right, he needs a bit of jump height. He's not jumping very high, so we'll get, boost the strength up to 100. Let's see if that's adequate enough. Yeah, that's still not going to cut it, so we'll jump that up to 150. Much better. <clears throat> So now you can see already just with them two events that our player stops colliding with the backdrop and the camera's following him already as well. That was pretty swift. Right, so what do we need to do now? We need to do um, when the player overlaps a carrot. So we're going to do player collides with another object. We're going to do carrot. We're going to say destroy the carrot. And we're going to add to the player score let's add five let's try that now so when i collect a carrot now the carrot disappears and we get five added on to our score You can see how quick and easy it is to put the games like this together in Fusion 2.5. I mean, it's just, it's effortless. It really is effortless. Um, and the best thing about it is there is so many more advanced things that you can do in Fusion 2.5 to polish the game off, make it look a hell of a lot better um, than what it originally does. But you can see already that we've got, uh, you know, we've got uh, three events. It's took us six or seven minutes to put this together. Uh, right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to give our enemy a movement. Um, so for this example, I'm going to use the path movement. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let him move towards the end of the ledge. Um, and then we can just loop the movement. So let's give that a look. Okay, yeah. We don't just want to loop the movement. Uh, we want to reverse at the end. But now let's try it. There we go. So we've got our enemies off and running. They're looping on the platforms just a little bit too fast. Rather than go through each individual node and change the speed, you can just do always movement set speed 9. Run that and you can see the enemies are moving at speed of 9 now. It just saves you going through the path movement and having to change each individual speed on each node. We can just do always set speed to 9. Now we need to do um, when the player collides with an enemy. The first thing we need to do is number of lives, subtract one from the number of lives and reposition the object. So we'll put him back down here. In fact, we'll put him just a little bit up like that. So let's give that a try. There we go. You can see already as soon as we collide with an enemy, it takes a life off and it puts us back down at the bottom. Um, what else do we need to do here? Um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. I mean, there's not much more to it than that. We can put in some sound effects and some music as well. Uh, but you can see how quick we managed to put that together. Let's create a new frame. When you create a new frame and you want to drag it about, you can just drag it up like that. So we'll create a new frame. Uh, this will be our title screen. So we can just pop that in the like that um, and then we can just literally jump straight into the events um, we're going to create an event that says uh, the user um, clicks within a zone 
left button, single click. We'll put it over the play button, like that. And then we go next frame. We can drag that condition down to create a new event because all we have to do is modify where that is. So we can't really do much with that until we create some more frames. So let's do high scores. Let's do um, game and let's do title screen. I don't need that additional frame there. I can get rid of that. So if you click on scores, we want to send them to the high score screen. If you click on exit, we can get them to exit the game. So we just do an action of end application. Right. So I should be able to run that now and click play. And you can see we're off and running in the game already. Um, one additional event which is missing, which is quite crucial, is we need to test the position of our player. Now, if he leaves the screen at the top left or right, we want to do movement stop. We then want to create a new condition that says if our player leaves the screen at the bottom, we're going to assume that the player has died. Um, so we need to repeat what we did here. We can just drag these actions down. Subtract one from the number of lives and reset his position. So now if I fall off a platform, it will subtract one from the life and reposition our player. So the aim of the game here is going to be to collect all the carrots. And when all the carrots are collected, um, we're going to switch to the high score screen. To where I can drag in this high score uh, background. Just align that in the frame. I can lock that down. Um, pop in a high score object like that. Can make that font a little bit bigger and we can make it a little bit brighter as well that's better right so back to our game back into the events and we just say um, pick or count have all carrot objects been destroyed so uh, once all the carrot objects have been destroyed we can assume the player has collected them all then we would do next frame just like that so let's hit play let's collect all the carrots That's going to be a tricky one. Oh, that's going to be very tricky to get. Let's try and get it from there. There we go. So this is our last carrot at the top, and it jumps to the next screen. It gives us a score of sixty. So I'm going to put in my name, Danny, and there you go. Now, one thing you do need to do on uh, the game screen is a start of frame event. Let's just drag that to the top. Um, you need to reset the scores because these player scores are global. So you need to set the score to zero and the same with the lives as well. Set it to three at the start of the frame because if the player leaves the frame like we just did to the high score screen, when we go back to the game, it'll still have the same number of lives in the high score that we left. On the previous frame with so as long as at the start of the frame we reset everything back so the score is zero and the number of lives to three every time the player goes back to a uh, game frame it'll be like a, a whole new game put in um now what we can do is we can also create um a timer as well um so for this i'm going to use a counter object um i'm going to keep it off screen because i don't really need the user to see um, what their time is so i'm going to call this um timer object like that and I'm going to create an event that says every one second um, add one to the counter um, so it's got, I'm just going to put it on the screen for now just so you can see it so you can see there that every second that passes it's adding to the counter and I'm going to drag it off the screen I can even make this counter hidden here because the user doesn't need to see it, but we're going to calculate the score now this time off um, the total number of 
um, carrots that they've collected we're going to do this the the time minus um, that so we can do um, what do we do we do uh, what we do to add five to score um, we're going to add whatever is on the timer so at the minute it's five so we can just do current value plus five um, minus five let's minus five because we're going to take off five seconds every time the user collects a carrot let's take off two seconds so because we've replaced this action now and we need to have the same action uh, no we don't we don't want to do it for that one we don't have the same action let's try it again right okay so um, play in fact let me just bring that counter back on the screen so we can see for this example how it's working so you can see the counter every second is counting up so we're losing points really so we're going to do four you can see the But the longer it takes the user, the more points he's going to get because we're adding the um, score of, um, we're going to add the value of this. So ideally, we don't really want that in um, at all. So what I'm going to suggest um, the best thing to do is um, set score rather than add to value. So we can delete that and we can do score, set score, and we can get the current value minus two. So basically the user score, as you can see here, will be, so I'm going to click the carrot at six seconds, it'll be four because it's six seconds minus two seconds. So it's going to take off two seconds every time you click the carrot, which is good because it gives the user incentive to get the game done quicker. So basically the quicker up you make it, the lower the score is going to be. And that's kind of um, more of, of what you want. Again, it all depends on how you want your scoring to work. But um, if you want to base it on a countdown, obviously, the lower the score is going to be, the higher the score is, if that makes sense. But again, the whole purpose of this tutorial is just to see how quickly you can put these things together in Fusion 2.5. Let's go to the high score. We'll create a new um, event. Let's do a user um, clicks within a zone again, because we need to do these buttons here. So we need to do play again. You will jump to frame two, um, and when the user clicks over exit, uh, we can end the application. So you can see now, in not much time at all, we've created a title screen, we've created a playable game, and we've created a high score um, file as well. So from the start, from the top, we can jump to view the scores, and then we can play the game where we can play the game itself to collect all the carrots. It's not took a great deal uh, of effort at all, a, a mere nine events uh, and an object library that I already put together for you. I hope this uh, tutorial is good for you. Um, if you'd like to check out more, don't forget to check out the Click Team forums and the Click Team website. And you can also check out fusionrad.com uh, where there's exclusive access to over 50 step-by-step -step written tutorials uh, and over nine hours of video footage for you to watch on how to learn Click Team Fusion 2.5 and how to develop your own games at a beginner and an intermediate level. Uh, and there's even some advanced um, tutorials on there as well. Um, check it out now, www.fusionrad.com, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.